A massive thank you to Mayuk, Hunter, Soul, Flipmo, and Andrew for subscribing to the channel. If you're not already featured in these clips, make sure you subscribe down below. Hello everyone, and welcome back to a brand new video, where today we return with round 10 of our F122 My Team Career Mode. Yesterday, we return back for our home Grand Prix. Yes, it's Silverstone, the British GP time, of course. Probably still, I'd say, uh, laid claim to the best race of the F1 2022 season. Let me know uh, whether you think that's a controversial opinion down in the comments below. But as always, I just want to say a massive thank you to all of you uh, for the insane and continued support. At the time of recording this, we are now very, very close to 86,000 subscribers. And I also quickly want to say a massive thank you to all of you uh, for the support on the announcement, of course, that we have joined Alfa Romeo F1 Team All in Esports as a content creator. But yeah, today, Back with my team. Uh, let's just make sure that, of course, we get everything going on the car that we absolutely need. Then we're going to work up some more R&D points, everything like that, of course, get our weekly resources in as well. Now, currently, currently, I, I am I am in the process of trying to save some money uh, at the moment. We've got 16,000 R&D points, but there is one driver uh, that is available on the market at the moment that we are very, very interested in. However, before we do any of that, uh, we've got to make sure that we get some fresh components on to the car there. So we're going to try and basically put a whole fresh engine into the car this weekend. I mean, the first power unit did do pretty well there. Nine races uh, is not bad going, but of course, Silver's is such a power-hungry circuit. Uh, quite a few tracks coming up are actually very, very power-sensitive. We want a fresh power unit. We've had a really bad run of form over the last couple of weekends. They have not quite been able to get uh, what we wanted. Championship-wise, we are now 14... Uh, sorry, 51 points back even. Uh, from Valtteri Bottas. So yeah, really has got a bit pear-shaped in recent weeks there. Teo Porcher sat in P8. We're still third overall in the Constructors ahead of Ferrari. But yeah, fingers crossed Silverstone can try and bring a good result. And yeah, maybe a return at the very least back to the podium. Right, well, here we are then. Back at Silverstone, of course. Still, in my eyes, the home of Formula 1. And of course, definitely the home of British Motorsport. It's been a little while, of course, since I've driven the My Team car. Of course, been away... Uh, for the last few days, but like I mentioned uh, in the F2 first drive video that I did yesterday, I have listened to you guys, I have been seeing all the comments, I'm going to be trying to bring back this series a whole lot more consistently for you over the next few weeks and months, of course, as we get to the end of 22, of course, still that big goal of 100k by the end of the year, so, you know, if you do enjoy the My Team series and you haven't clicked that big red button down below, please make sure you do, uh, so I know to continue to bring you guys more and more of this content but yeah fingers crossed that we can try and just kick off the weekend with a good track climatization lap score seventh gear through the old term one not quite flat out like it always used to be down in towards the final corners of course synonymous now with the through goes hamilton line this has been a pretty decent run but i don't think it will quite be the purple score uh yeah we we just we just missed out Right, tire wear management test coming up next then. Let's see if we can try and get a purple score on this one. Like I said at the moment, we don't really need the R&D. We have just got so much waiting to use, but of course can't quite use it just yet. So maybe for the second half of the year, uh, if we get that new driver locked in. Of course, I'm sure many of you uh, that will be keeping updated on this series right from the beginning of Season 3. You'll probably have a good idea as to who we are going to try and snatch for the second half of the campaign. But, I mean, Teo Porcher has done fantastically well early on this year, so it's, it's going to take someone pretty special uh, to want to try and replace Teo. But, of course, yeah, we want to fight for championships, and sometimes the F2 drivers just don't quite have exactly what you need them uh, when you're really trying to fight towards the sharp end in Formula 1. But, so far, this tire wear program hasn't gone particularly well. We're way up on the Delta, but nowhere near where I want to be in terms of the tire life. Right, and through the final couple of turns again, then he's going to be very, very close to the purple score. We have really lifted and coasted out of this final sector, okay, and we just clutch it up. There we go, then. Purple score here in free practice. Let's get into qualifying. Formula One is finally back in 2022, and now you can rep your favourite teams. Of course, using the F1 store, every team now has merch lineups available, whether you're an Aston Martin fan, a Williams fan, Mercedes, Ferrari, Red Bull, the choice is completely up to you. But yeah, check out the F1 merch store down below for all the official releases from all of the teams. And of course, as always, if you use our links as well, you massively help support the channel. So yeah, give it a look and see if there's anything you like.
Right, well, let's jump into it then. Q2 here from the British Grand Prix, and immediately, yeah, fingers crossed. Good times are going to be low 26s if we want to see ourselves immediately down into Q3. I'd love to try and get it done in one run, but Silverstone is always a track you kind of got to build up to. You, know, you really can't just attack this track first time, man. You've, you've got to let it come towards yourself as well there as we head down through turn one there. Attack the curves nicely, of course, completely pinned in a modern Formula 1 car has been for many, many years there and just feel the back end obviously low speed still very, very little grip on F122 but we are so far so good as we head out of the loop there, kept it pretty clean and tidy, we'll just have to wait and see how the lap unfolds a little purple through the middle sector there Daniel Ricciardo sets the pace on a 27.2 in his Ferrari but of course we often see times a little bit off early on in a qualifying session there as we tick through the final couple of corners once more out of the final turn. What is the time going to be on the board? Felt a whole lot better. 26-3. That might just be enough to immediately post us into Q3 there. That was that was pretty clean and tidy. Well, there we go then. Official confirmation at the end of Q2. Valtteri Bottas fastest on a 25-5. So the AI are getting quicker and quicker here. We're going to get two chances at it in Q3. Daniel Ricciardo that didn't make it through, but Latifi did for the first time in a whole long time. But yeah, sweat mode's going to have to be engaged. It's been a while since he's done a sweat mode lap, so we'll wait and see how this goes. All right, heading down in towards the final couple of turns. Then we've got one of the Red Bulls just in front of me, but he's trying to open ourselves at the best run for our first sweat mode lap here at Silverstone in Q3. Let's wait and see what times we can post up. Oh, 1024 by the end of sector two there. It's been a pretty tidy lap. We just ran a little bit wide down at the old turn one there. And now we're definitely going to run wide at the end of the hangar straight. So this lap is all ruined now, unfortunately. See what time we can still post up. Of course, need a good benchmark to try and chase on the final run. But out of the final corner, then Max Verstappen 25 7. We set a 26 flat there. Slots us into provisional P2. But we are going to need an absolute worldy of a final run here at Silverstone. All right, well, everyone else then, I think, coming towards the end of their final Q3 runs. But, of course, the home crowd behind us hopefully will cheer us on here as we get prepared to start our final lap of qualifying for the British Grand Prix. We're very conscious about blocking that Alpine just behind us. But out of the final corner we go. Let's try and give the fans what they're after. Let's try and put this thing on pole here for the British Grand Prix. We'll get out of the way. We do not want a repeat of uh, Jeddah quite a few races ago there as George Russell will peel into the pit lane, but a couple more corners to go. Made a big, big mistake at the end of Sector 1 as we went out of the loop, but we are just about, I think, going to improve here. It's going to be really close. I think we stay P4, of course, but... Oh, that hurt there. That could have been a pole lap. Well, there we go then. The end of qualifying for the British Grand Prix, and it is Bottas on the pole there, but I think, yeah, even... With those three tenths, we would have probably been around Max Verstappen's pace. McLaren are just relentless at the moment there. But Teo Porche down in P9 there at the end of qualifying. Nicholas Satifi are down in 10th place. Let's get into it though. British Grand Prix. Fingers crossed we can try and bring home some good points for the team. This channel is proudly sponsored by Bybit, the official crypto partner of Red Bull's Formula 1 team. 
I've been using their platform for my personal crypto savings over the last few months and when they got in touch to support the channel, I was super, super excited. Currently, they're offering you guys a special new promo for the first 100 of you to deposit $10 or more onto the platform, you'll get another $10 free. Also, five lucky winners will get their initial deposit doubled up to $1,000. That means if you deposited $1,000 onto the platform using my codes below, you could be within a chance to get another $1,000 completely free. We've seen the landscape around crypto drastically change over the last couple of years and I genuinely believe it holds an important place in our future. However, please be careful as always when trading as you are liable uh, to lose money. But if you're interested and you're 18 or older, click the link down below to get started and see why Red Bull and myself as well as thousands of others trust Bybit as their crypto. We return once again then to the home of British motorsport and the birthplace of the Formula One World Championship. It's race day here at Silverstone and it's time for the British Grand Prix. Straddling the border of Northamptonshire and Buckinghamshire, the 18 corners of Silverstone Circuit form the 3.6 mile beating heart of Formula One. It's been reinvented over the years with turn one now the fast right-hander of Abbey, but the magic of racing is as strong here as it's ever been. Before we begin, let's take a quick look at the grid lineup for today's race. Valtteri Bottas lines up on pole position and Max Verstappen lines up alongside. Moving on to the rest of the grid, we have Perez, Mr. Monaco, Lando Norris and Joe, Russell, Leclerc, Theo Porcher and Nicholas Latifi, Albon, Ricardo, Esteban Ocon and Gasly, Sonoda, Mick Schumacher, Kevin Magnussen and Felipe Drugovich. Stroll, Oscar Piastri, Tictum and Robert Schwartzman. Now it's almost time for lights out, so let's go down to the track. Anthony Davidson joins me once again in the commentary box. and it's fantastic to have you with us here, but I'm curious, as a man with experience out on the track, how do you stop those pre-race nerves from becoming overwhelming when you're lining up on the grid? Well, I imagine they'll be starting to feel the adrenaline as they anticipate the rundown into Turn 1, a bit like preparing to go into battle. The unknown situation will bring nerves, but that's a good thing. It will keep them focused on the moment and on their surroundings as we build towards the start of the Grand Prix. I know this is your home Grand Prix, but treat it like any other race. Let's not make any unnecessary risks. Right, well, here we are then. Wise words from Mark as we get ourselves prepared for the British Grand Prix here. Of course, mainly what we want is a good solid chance at points today. The team do think we could go soft to hearts. I mean, we've got a fresh set still from the end of qualifying. I made sure we use the fifth set rather than the fourth, although it's going to make very little difference, uh, so we may as well stick with the rest of the runners here. But fingers crossed we can keep it clean and tidy today. We need to try and get a good result in here at Silverstone there. Bottas and Max Verstappen are two main championship rivals starting in front of us. So who I knew behind has bolted on a set of the soft compound tyres for the British Grand Prix, but... Yeah, we desperately need to try and start taking points out of Bottas. We did pretty well after the opening few races to start closing down that gap. And then two really disastrous weekends. One of them, uh, to be honest, was quite a disaster for Bottas as well. But yeah, Canada was a big, big blow. Right, we're getting ready then to line up on the grid ready for the British Grand Prix. Valtteri Bottas, of course, already a winner around this venue, if I remember correctly. Once before? I might be making that up now, I think about that. Actually, I don't think Bottas... I know he's taken pole here a couple of times, but I don't think he ever actually got the win away from Lewis Hamilton. But yeah, Bottas and Verstappen, those are the two big ones we need to try and beat today. Let's try and make sure we get the car slowed down nice and tidy on the grid. It did flash purple and then went back to green. Uh, so not too sure how we managed that one. Waiting on both those Alfa Romeos at the back of the grid. But let's get into it then. British GP time. 26 laps ahead of us around an absolute old school roller coaster of a circuit. Waiting on those five red lights. And it is going to be lights out. And away we go. But none, none of us are surprised by that, I presume, as we head down in towards Turn 1 there. George Russell 
incredibly brave around the outside of both Charlotte Flair and myself. There is, we actually apparently got a warning for a collision with the Mercedes there, but not the start we would have wanted here at Silverstone. Of course, losing a couple of spots to cars on softer rubber, but certainly, yeah, just as always. I tried something a bit different there. I tried to launch it in second gear to see if that would work. I, I, I'll be honest, I saw some of the eSports drivers doing it. Uh, that's where sort of the idea came from, but it absolutely uh, still does not work there. I think it's actually uh, because my pedals are knackered. You can just see actually on the throttle tracer at the bottom centre of your screen there. Low throttle. It really does flicker around the place. Is Charlotte Leclerc going to try and come back at me as we head up in towards the old turn one there? Luckily, Leclerc, of course, knowing what happened to Hamilton and Verstappen last year, thinks better of that one on the inside there. Just, I mean, let's be fair. It's a fair chance... You know, two will not go into one on lap one, though, with cold tyres, everything like that, heavy fuel. Um, but normally, yeah, the car on the outside is the one that has to back out. But we've got pretty good top end speed, actually, around this circuit. So we're able to hang on this time around there as we head down in towards sector three. Looks like Joe Guanyu has really bolted on the start there. He's utilised those soft tyres to the best of their ability. He's now applying pressure to his teammate and both of those Red Bull cars there. As we've then got a train of British drivers, Lando Norris, George Russell and myself there, 5th, 6th and 7th, because that was a horrible line down in towards the final chicane, but we have survived lap 1, we're down places, but we know that the car will come back to us later on, because that's going to be a warning for track limits through Turn 1 then, do not often fancy exploring that area of the Silverson facility. There we go, new fastest lap of the day as we start lap 3, I forgot just how bad cold rubber is at the start of the Grand Prix on F122, but now we're starting to sort of get more used to it again. We are definitely closing in this gap on Russell and Lando Norris. Then a little bit of a wobble as we head through the loop. Just trying to get more and more comfortable on the throttle once again there. As we head now out onto the Wellington Strait. Are we going to be able to try and get a run on George Russell? Look at the top end speed we've got. Often hasn't been our strong point this year. But clearly at Silverstone we found a concept that really does work nicely. Alright, heading out then onto the hangar straight. You can see now again utilising this top end speed to the absolute best of our ability there. There goes George Russell. Lando Norris is just going to box us in though. And now George Russell's going to have a look down the inside of Lando Norris. Three young British talents going side by side down in towards the final sector. We will again just about sneak to the inside of George Russell there. And we will now move back up into P6 of the Grand Prix there. But brilliant battling at the start of this Grand Prix there as Max Verstappen finding even more pace there. Charles Leclerc has snuck by as well there. So through goes Charles Leclerc at the British Grand Prix. But now we need to try and stay close to Lando Norris. We know that Alpine can often be weirdly strong uh, down straights on F1. You know, sometimes it's rapid. Other times it's like a shopping trolley uh, with a loose wheel. But we'll wait and see what Lando Norris is going to be able to do. Of course, no DRS to defend himself. But look at the speed we've got. As we head down the hangar, uh, the Wellington Strait, sorry, Lando Norris trying to move around a little bit in the braking zone. And that was ended up being a Sebastian Vettel style move there right down in towards the apex. But that corner really does allow you to kind of commit to an early apex and try and hang on there. Back up to P5 then of the British Grand Prix here. Things are really kicking off early on. But we've now got to try and hunt down the gap to the top four. Red Bull McLaren, Red Bull McLaren. Here goes Zhou Guan Yu then to the outside of Sergio Perez as we head down the hangar straight there. And Checo will defend very, very aggressively there. Red Bull know they need to try and keep that McLaren at bay as we head down in towards the final couple of turns here. But this is just working out beautifully for me. There is all Zhou Guan Yu kind of trips over himself out of the final couple of turns there. Another big snap of oversteer. But we are definitely feeling confident now. We've got into a race trim. Really haven't had this sort of pace or confidence in the car in a good couple of weeks there. As again, running a little bit wide through turn one. Had to lift that and throttle down a gear. But luckily kept it clean and tidy. And of course, no warning this time around as well. But will Perez now be able to get a run off the corner? Will Zhou Guan Yu be able to pick up the traction on those softer tyres and maybe try and get a run past him there? I mean, Verstappen and Bottas are duking out even harder. So Checo now might just be back within the DRS range here. Five cars going at it here at Silverstone. You don't get racing like this very often. Let's see if Joe Guanyu can get another run on Checo because it looks like we've got pretty good speed on the pair of them. Here goes Verstappen up the inside of Valtteri Bottas once again. Joe Guanyu up the inside of Sergio there. And you can just see Perez going to get squeezed out off the corner. So we're going to try and have a look to the inside of the Mexican. He's going to try and have a look to the outside of Joe Guanyu there off the corner and we just can't quite put the power down we haven't quite got the skills of a seven-time formula one world champion there to do the old up and under 
off the corner. So we can head back through turn one, though. Getting really, really close. Right under the rear wing of the Mexican's Red Bull car there. And up the inside will go. And now up into P4, then, of the Grand Prix. Can we try and pick off Joe Guan Yu as well as we head out on of the loop? Oh, again, just got to be really careful of the wheel spin there. Just was able to modulate it and keep the car corrected. But gaining, gaining, gaining on the Zhou Guan Yu. I don't know why I've called him the Zhou Guan Yu. He is just Zhou Guan Yu. Still a very, very talented man, none the lesser, as we head down through Luffield once more. We'll sit back for now, but I'm eyeing up the hangar straight. Fun fact for you guys about Zhou Guan Yu as well. He actually knows who I am, uh, rather weirdly. Met him at the Sauber factory. It's a very, very story in itself. And he said, hey, Matt, to me, which I was very, very surprised by. We're going to try and look up the inside of him as we head down in towards Sector 3 there. The McLaren's still going to be on the inside, but we'll go late on the brakes there. I think his soft tyres now, whoa, starting to fall off just a little bit. As I'm apparently wanted to try and destroy our mediums. But, yeah, met Zhou Guan Yu for the first time last week. I uh, was walking down a flight of stairs, did not expect to see him. And, yeah, he just he introduced himself and said hello to me. And, yeah, said, said he knew my name, which was rather weird. He did genuinely just say hello, Matt, to me, which I found incredibly weird. But yellow flags out in Sector 1. Not too sure who's going slowly. Um, I think... Oh, no, it's... No, it's Teoport Chair! No! So two reliability mechanical failures in two Grand Prix for the team. And Teoport Chair out of the British Grand Prix there. It really just has been... Such a tumultuous tale for our teammates so far this year that he is out of the British Grand Prix and I've got to try and close up on Bottas and Verstappen. Starting that nine then, we've already got a handful of cars into the pits here at Silverstone. I can't imagine it's going to be long then before Zhou Guan Yu decides to box. But yeah, Bottas and Verstappen are still going absolutely hammer and tong at each other. So the gap is going the right way. And are we going to see the three championship rivals duking it out for the race victory here at Silverstone? seen it before. Championship rivals going at it here and often it's created some storylines. There we go. Joe Guan Yu, Charles Leclerc and a handful of other cars into the pits as well at the end of lap 9. So yeah, we are getting closer and closer to our pit window. You always know on F122 you want to try and go for an overcut on the AI if possible. So lap 12, lap 13 okay, are where, where we aim to block. Or apparently not then, according to Mark. We might have really worked these tyres hard. Oh, Verstappen, big, big lockup down at the final corner there. And Valtteri Bottas will re-inherit the lead of the Grand Prix there. And it might push us within the one-second zone of both the Red Bull and the McLaren there. As 28-8, new fastest lap of the day. Really attack the kerbs through turn one. But yeah, getting closer and closer for the halfway stage of the Grand Prix. We are now inside the DRS range of the top two here, and they are still not giving each other an inch. End of lap 12, though. Neither Bottas or Verstappen are going to peel into the pit lane here, so we're going to make a very, very last-minute call and jump into the pits there. George Russell, Lando Norris behind us are going to join me, but yeah, one of Perez or Verstappen is going to have to go really, really long into this Grand Prix on that set of tyres there. But the undercut doesn't often work on F122, but I'm going to try and risk it here today. There, Even if it just means we've got warm tyres uh, when they come out of the pit lane here, what we really need uh, is actually Bottas and Verstappen to start to squabble once again as just get the new clean tyres bolted on. Where are we going to re-emerge in this Grand Prix? There's Joe Guan Yu, Charles Leclerc, I think, still disputing places as well. As there goes Dan Ticktum. Just up the road, but got to make sure we're nice and steady on the throttle on the exit of the pit lane. Otherwise, you will light up the rears like I almost just um, there. And there is Charles Leclerc and Zhou Guan Yu a little way behind. We've got to keep those two at bay as they're both on mediums. Surely they're not trying to take mediums to the end. Have we once again absolutely been hoodwinked on strategy here? It happened last time round when Verstappen managed to use one set of dry tyres from the changeover to the end of the Grand Prix. Charles Leclerc and Joe Wayne are going to have their work cut out to make that happen. Really having to still defend hard from Charles Leclerc and Joe Wayne behind, but where are we going to re-emerge in comparison to Bottas and Max Verstappen? It looks like Perez, the tyre-saving king, has had to stay out for one extra one here, but these hard tyres, especially under this much pressure from Leclerc behind, he doesn't seem like we've been able to get the jump that I wanted there. We are actually lost a little bit of time to the cars in front. But of course, they're both still on cold rubber. 
So we're going to try and work ourselves back into that gap, but yeah, Zhou Guan Yu and Charles Leclerc have suddenly become major threats in this Grand Prix. If they can make those medium tyres work to the end, surely they're going to have a big, big advantage over the three hard tyre runners in front. So there we go. Perez heading out of the pit lane there as we attack the kerbs through turn one. We are now still up in P3, so it is still the big three going for it in this race. McLaren versus Red Bull versus 212 Motorsport. It's not a battle we've had so often actually on track, but it's certainly a battle that we've had in the you know in the bigger picture. In the in the bigger picture this season. There we go. Now the new fastest lap. I think we are starting to have to give Verstappen a little bit of a hurry up here in the British Grand Prix as we've got 11 laps to go. You can see now, we've actually slightly broken out of the DRS of Charles Leclerc and Joe Guan Yu behind. This is three drivers at the absolute top of their game going all out for every point they possibly can get. Bottas is the one with the advantage at the moment, but I need to try and make a move on Verstappen or really hurry him up so he gets closer to the rear wing of Valtteri again. I must also add, I haven't mentioned it so far, I can't work out if I like the new McLaren OKX livery. I really don't know whether it's the vibe or not. Here we go, though. Max Verstappen now under pressure as we head down the hangar straight once more. Are we going to be able to get to the inside of the Red Bull? Yes, we just about are. And we'll break deep and late on the brakes there. And move up into P2 of the Grand Prix. Looks like Verstappen actually ran off a little bit wide off the corner. I don't feel like squeezed in that aggressively. But sometimes the Dutchman has got to accept when a place has been lost. So it might now be between myself and Bottas for the race lead here. But, yeah, Verstappen's still hanging on inside that DRS for now. Well, oh, very quickly, the focus has shifted from Max Verstappen to Valtteri Bottas in this Grand Prix as we try and again get a run out onto the hangar straight there. I think this time around we're going to be a little bit too far back, but we are feeling so confident at the moment. The car has not felt this alive in a good few races here, probably since about Spain. If I remember correctly, as you can see, Bottas now feeling the pressure. Verstappen has dropped away. I think he might just hope that we come together or we squabble quite aggressively so we can try and take out some time. Can we try and get a run either out into the Wellington Strait or out into the Hangar Strait once more? There are plenty of opportunities to try and get the move done here at Silverstone, but you've got to be brave. You've really got to try and hang on through the corners before the moves happen. As we head down through the loop once again, second gear, just to get the rotation third and fourth on the exit to pick up the traction as now we open up the ERS we open up the DRS once more as we head out onto the Wellington Strait but again we aren't quite going to be close enough this time round Bottas is giving it everything as we get all over his gearbox down into the next corner but we've just got to try and pull alongside here we go let's get a run on Valtteri Bottas and as we head down the back straight to the outside of the McLaren there and swoop into the lead of the British Grand Prix for the first time today there. The home crowd will absolutely be loving that one. But Bottas is going to try and come back at me. Down in towards the final few corners of the lap. That will slam the door shut. Through the chicane. And through goes Matt 212 into the lead. Here at Silverstone. And Bottas there has dropped back slightly. Perhaps a bit too optimistic. On the dirty part of the circuit there. Through the final couple of corners. And now... We've got a golden opportunity to try and break free of the McLaren out of nowhere. Let's keep our head down. Let's push. Uh, eight laps to go still at this Grand Prix. Trying to do mental maths and commentate on the battle for the lead is no easy feat. Look at that purple middle sector. We're pulling away from Bottas at the moment. It has taken us 19 laps in this Grand Prix after a poor start to work our way back to the front. But really, I'm hoping at the moment that now we're back here, no one else is going to really get a look in. Seven laps to go here at Silverstone, and we bring it home for home race glory, and finally, another win on the board. Ah, the final corner of this lap has felt absolutely fantastic now, and look at that, 28-0. We are absolutely flying here with five laps to go of the British Grand Prix there. Verstappen seems to have been caught out, stuck now battling with Leclerc and Joe Guan Yu further back. Valtteri Bottas, of course, a wise old head on some very, very experienced shoulders in Formula 1. He knows... They're trying to fight for these extra seven points when he's got so much at his disposal. Although when he's got such a big points lead, he's probably pretty pointless here. It might be a might be a bit of an anticlimactic finish to the British Grand Prix, but as always, it has delivered some brilliant overtaking. Remember, of course, we were eighth down at Turn One of this Grand Prix. We've really had to try and pick our way back up through the rostrum, but yeah, we've got a two and a half second lead now with five laps to go. Surely we can just bring this car home. 
for our first home race victory on F122. I can just see at the corner of my eye Verstappen and Leclerc swapping places over and over. 2019 vibes nonetheless. Starting the final lap then of the British Grand Prix and we have really, I mean like I said, the last couple of races have been an absolute nightmare. Canada would have been P9 if we hadn't even had the engine failure and then of course Baku we lacked pace and confidence all afternoon but were still able to recover for a pretty decent P4. We needed a return to form this weekend here at Silverstone and I think yeah a race victory with hopefully a fastest lap as well is certainly certainly quite right, right exactly uh, what we wanted here of course. We've had a plenty of heartbreak in this career mode up to now but season three we are certainly championship threats. We are here to fight for the world title and hopefully yeah, bring glory to 2 and 2 motorsport for the first time there. Bottas has ran me pretty hard still to the end of the Grand Prix there. Of course, the reigning world champion still will leave this weekend with a rather healthy uh, points lead at the top of the table. In fact, I think it might even be bigger uh, over the Stappen than it was, of course, heading into it because I don't think we'll get the jump on Max just yet there. I think the Stappen still trying to battle hard with Zhou Guanyu through the final lap of this Grand Prix there. Zhou Guanyu, Charles Leclerc, fantastic strategy choices to be able to come away and still fight right at the very front there. But rounding the final few corners of the British Grand Prix, it's going to be our first win at Silverstone on F122. I'm sure the home crowd are going absolutely wild. Rounding the final few corners, 25 points on the board. That is exactly what we needed after the disaster of Canada. Yes, fantastic! You just won the Grand Prix! Plenty of action here at Silverstone, a memorable race and an impressive victory. Tell me, Ant, how do they manage to achieve this win? Well, I honestly feel it was down to the driver and car today. I mean, we can talk driver skill all day, but if you don't have a solid team to back that, you're never going to get anywhere. When you hit that sweet spot of having both an excellent driver and an incredible car, that's when you see results like those we witnessed today. Welcome then to the podium, our top three drivers. What a great effort from them today in a very difficult race. how the driver's standings have changed. More points for Valtteri Bottas, further solidifying his lead at the top of the table. Well, after an incredible day of racing, who was your driver of the day, Ant? I have to give it to Mr Monaco. There was a lot going on all down the field, but they were the only one who I really felt maximised their potential. It's time to see how things are shaping up in the Constructors' Championship. No change in the top spot then, but with today's points, their hold on that lead is getting weaker. I'm equal parts exhausted and elated with this weekend of Formula One, so be sure to join us for the next one. Well, there we are then, the end of the British Grand Prix. And for the first time, like I said, I think since Spain, we are finally back on top here and we have won our home Grand Prix there. That means, of course, 2 1 2 Motorsport won Monaco with Teo Porcher and have won Silverstone here with myself. And I'm really hoping uh, out in France in a couple of weeks' time. Uh, whether Teo Porcher will be able to get that race victory as well. There, but Bottas P2 ahead of Verstappen and Zhou Guanyu there. Charles Leclerc ahead of Perez, Russell, Ricardo, and then both Alpines rounding out our top 10 there. Lando Norris 16 seconds clear of his teammate there. Just Teo Porcher who didn't make it home to the checkered flag. They're very, very gutted for our teammate. But it does mean championship wise, Bottas, yeah, does extend that lead at the front of the table uh, to 33 points there. But we're back inside two race victories there, 41 points back. Now, as you can see, they're just eight points behind Max Verstappen. So winning another fastest lap next time round will guarantee us back into P2 there. Perez still hanging on to P4, just one point now clear of Charles Leclerc. Russell, Zhou Guanyu, Teo Porcher, Ricardo and Lando Norris 
rounding out our top 10. Uh, Nicholas Asifi, just to remind you, still has one point to his name. Uh, so far this year. Constructors-wise, though, Red Bull do still lead the way. 18 clear of McLaren after this weekend. We're still a long way back, and it's, yeah, increasingly difficult uh, to try and close down that gap when you do end up with reliability failures. But we do open up the gap once more over Ferrari nonetheless. But thank you all so much for watching this video. If you have enjoyed, please do make sure you leave a like, get yourself subscribed as well, and we will return very, very soon with more. None of these videos would be possible without the help of our channel members, so a massive thank you to all of the names you see on your screens currently for helping support the channel. You can join them by clicking the join button down below, and yeah, thank you once again to everyone that continues all the insane support on my work.